The International Rescue Committee, in fact, issued a statement about this ruling from the International Court of Justice, quote, a halt in hostilities is exactly what is needed in Gaza right now. The start of your statement, is the court correct in this ruling? Well, we speak to the humanitarian situation, not to the, the political situation. As a humanitarian agency, we can report to you on the situation on the ground, which is very grave mm -hmm. indeed. Uh, there are mountainous levels of ill health in Gaza at the moment. Um, it's a more densely populated area than New York City, twice as densely populated as New York City. And it's obviously suffered a high level of destruction. So the water infrastructure is broken. Uh, we also are finding it impossible to get our own staff in because the Rafa crossing is now closed. And so from our point of view, the imperative for a humanitarian drive is very, very high indeed. Uh, ultimately, a ceasefire is the way to best service those enormous humanitarian needs. We certainly need in any interim period massively greater aid flows of, of food and water and fuel so that we can allow our aid workers who also need to get in to treat the wounded and mm -hmm. to treat the sick. Yeah. So I want to get to this, David, because we've heard reports of Hamas attacking relief convoys, stealing food. We've also heard Reports, of course, of Israel blocking gates and preventing relief organizations from accessing Gaza. That's why we had to build a temporary pier that does not appear to be working terribly well at the moment. Are both parties responsible? Why cannot the aid get in? Well, the aid can't get in and people can't get in to deliver the aid because the entrances are blocked. That's the simple answer. Mm -hmm. to your so question. that begins with now, Israel now just, in that just, answer. Just a second. There are multiple entrances. Uh, the Kerem Shalom crossing, which is obviously controlled by Israel, it's from Israel into Gaza, uh, that is open for commercial traffic, not for humanitarian aid. Although there was an announcement today, very significant, after the call from President Biden to the Egyptian president, that humanitarian aid from Egypt will be routed through that crossing. That's some hope there. There is a Jordan crossing. That's delivering some support. But what I can speak to is the fact that the total of this effort is not delivering for the people, the civilians inside Gaza, who we want to treat and who until two weeks ago we were treating. The level of need is very, very high. And you'll have had reports on your own show about malnutrition, even famine warnings from members of the administration. That's right. And we're trying to stave off a genuine public health emergency where tens of thousands of people are at risk. What assurances are you receiving from Israel that delivered aid gets to those who need it? Or are you not receiving those assurances? Well, that isn't quite the way it works. The United Nations is in touch with the Israeli authorities. Uh, we, at the moment, can't get our aid workers in because the crossing for aid workers, the Rafa crossing, is closed. We have some local staff there. Yeah. We have partners there. But there's no cash in the economy. So that's a, an enormous block on allowing people to at least buy whatever is available. You can imagine the circumstances there. And so we're dealing with really the inverse of, the, of what should be the humanitarian situation. The needs of the people, civilians, should come first, and it's the obligation of anyone in conflict to facilitate the delivery of the humanitarian aid. That is not happening at the moment. And from our point of view, the ultimate test is not about the number of trucks, it's about the food getting to the people. And that means crossing into Gaza and then being able to move within Gaza without fear that you're going to run into conflict. Does Israel not need to be more flexible to get gates open and aid delivered? If I'm we, reading we you correctly, this the, is the root of the problem. Well, the gates that are controlled by Israel, which now includes the Rafa crossing, which has historically, during this conflict, been the humanitarian aid entry point. That is currently closed. And it's also the entry point for humanitarian aid workers. And so that is a, a fundamental responsibility that exists at the moment. I also want to emphasize that transit within Gaza is extremely difficult. Remember, 800,000 people have been moved out of Rafah, the, the city of Rafah, over the last two and a half weeks. Uh, they've moved either to the coastal area, Mawasi, or up into the middle of Gaza to already massively overcrowded areas of Khan Yunis uh, and of Deir el Bala. Now, these uh, are massively overcrowded areas with no health mm -hmm. 
or sanitary infrastructure. That's why there's such a public health emergency, never mind the conflict that's still going on around Rafa. We saw snap elections announced in the UK uh, this week, David. I'm not going to ask you what's going to happen there, but I wonder to what extent policy in Gaza will be on voters' minds. I think it will be. The uh, war in Gaza is a global issue, and Europe is obviously closer to the Middle East than the United States uh, geographically. And uh, large numbers of people will have this in their minds. There's been a lot of coverage of it. Uh, there is a real yearning uh, for some kind of solace for the civilians inside Gaza, while, of course, there is absolute horror what happened in Israel on October the 7th. And so I think that the debate about foreign policy, which has historically not been a big part of elections, either in my country or in yours, it could well play. It's never going to be the dominant issue, uh, but I accept in really exceptional circumstances. But I think it will be uh, discussed, and it deserves to be.